morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this Christ the King Sunday. We have several announcements this morning. This week is the last week to give to the Heifer program. You may do so by dropping uh, your donation in the little church shaped house out there on the parlor table or if you want to put it in the offering plate, just make sure that you designate that it is for the Heifer Project so that we can support that mission. We are also participating in the local Turn the Tide event again this year. That is where we take a tag off of the little tree on the table over by the church office. Uh, last I looked, there were a couple of tags left and they are for children. Um, so if you want to support that, what we do is we take the tag, it has the name of the child, a few ideas for you for gifts that you might wish to purchase. The um, recommended amount is somewhere between $35 and $40 for the gift or gifts that you choose to buy. Um, there's also on the uh, separate tag instructions as to how to wrap and label that gift. And if um, you want to bring the gifts back here on Sunday the 10th, we'll make sure that they get to Inner Church by the 11th. If you don't make it here, you can drop them off yourself on the 11th as well. But they do need to be to Inner Church by December 11th. There are a couple of sign-up sheets out in the parlor. One is for lighting of the Advent candles. We need families or individuals to sign up for that. I do need somebody for next week, so if nothing else, if you will either sign up or talk to me or Nancy, we'll make sure that we get you the script that you need and get everything set up for that. Um, there's also a sign-up sheet for the Christmas card-making event that takes place during the Christmas walk. Uh, the number of lines on the sheet are the minimum number of people that we need to help with that event. If the sheet gets all filled up and you want to come help anyway, please do. More hands make for lighter work. Um, Advent does start next Sunday, and we will be doing a sermon series entitled Christmas in the Four Gospel Homes. We will be visiting Christmas as if we are in the homes of what the four gospel writers or what the, this uh, is envisioned as, what their homes might have looked like. Were they simple? Were they ornate? Were they warm? Were they basic? Uh, we're going to have some fun with that, and we're going to bring that, hopefully bring that spirit of Christmas in its many forms into our hearts and then out into our homes as well. Um, we, do, we do want to set up the big Christmas tree today after church out in the parlor. So if you are able to hang around and help with that, that would be great. Um, there will be a blue Christmas service held on Sunday, December 17th at 4 p.m. at First Baptist Church. Um, this is sponsored by FACA, I believe, and all are welcome. A uh, blue Christmas service is a time of reflection for those who've lost loved ones or have other things happening in their lives that just kind of makes Christmas a little bit less festive because of situations in their lives. Um, the service will include music, scripture, reflections, and a time for healing. And the Christmas walk is Saturday, December 2nd from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, the online auction, it says, will go live soon. And it sounds like they still need some um, baked goods for the scrumptious auction. And baked goods, if you do volunteer to bring those in, can be brought to the council office between 1 and 4 p.m. on the day of the walk. And then the uh, scrumptious auction will be at 5 o'clock. Um, as we go through the service today, we're going to try to include in communion, have your hymn books kind of ready. We're going to do it a little differently today. We are going to sing uh, one of the service music songs, Holy, 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 as part of the communion service. And the page number is marked for that in your bulletin. 
And do we have any other announcements? Did I miss anything at all? I did. Yes. So uh, we'll pray for Homer and his family um, in his passing. This is a hard time of year. And for those of you who do not know, Barb also lost her sister. Um, so we are keeping her in our prayers as well. It's a hard time of year to, it's never good to say goodbye, but for some reason it seems harder somehow at the holidays. Yeah. Yes? Okay, it's Hallmark. There is a new hallmark that you must see. If you know any children who were adopted, or who are adopted, or you're thinking of adopting, it's called the season of the family. It's about two young boys who were adopted, and they find out they're brothers. It is wonderful. It'll make you cry. It'll make you laugh. It'll make you smile, all that stuff. But it's called the season of the family, and I think they got a winner here. So you, all the rest of them are kind of silly. This one isn't. It's very, very good, okay? I'll shut up now. But it's a good one. Today, as I said, is Christ the King Sunday. It's a time when the church gives thanks and praise for the sovereignty of Christ, who is the Lord of all creation and is coming again in glory to reign. The festival of Christ the King, or the reign of Christ, ends the season of ordinary time according to the Christian calendar. And it leads us into the season of Advent, the season of hope. It is a day that celebrates the Lordship of Christ in which we are reminded to recall his ascension and crucifixion, his resurrection and transfiguration and to look ahead to his return when Jesus will appear in glory to reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. These are the wonders that we celebrate this day. Christ reigns supreme. Christ judges every falsehood with truth. As the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, Christ is the center of the universe, the ruler of all history, the judge of all people. In Christ all things began, and in Christ all things will be fulfilled. And in the end, Christ will triumph over all the forces of evil. Amen to that. For all this and more, Christ alone has the right to claim our highest loyalty. We are called to stand with those who in every age confessed, Jesus Christ is Lord. Let us stand for our call to worship. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God. teaching by word and deed, and blessing the children, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners. Let us praise the Lord. Let us pray. Holy One, enthroned in glory over all creation, you are a shepherd to the lost and the least. Teach us to see your face among the poor by feeding the hungry, giving a drink to the thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, and visiting those who are sick or in prison, so that we may share in your eternal realm, prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, who is coming indeed to reign with justice, compassion, and love, we pray these things. Amen. 
Our first hymn is number 186, Come Now, You Blessed, Eat at My Table. Good morning. Change papers here, so I've got to find my place. Our first scripture reading this morning is uh, from Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. Is it he that made us, and we are his? We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter the gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give him thanks, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Second scripture reading is Ephesians chapter one, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above the rule and majority and power and dominion, above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. May God bless this reading of his holy word. Let us prepare our hearts for worship with our call to confession. With sincere and repentant hearts, let us name our sins against Christ and against one another. Let us pray. Sovereign God, we confess that we are not ready for your holy realm. You guide us toward right paths, but we refuse to follow where you lead. You love and feed and care for us but we fail to love and serve others. Forgive us, merciful God, so that we may return to your fold and rejoice in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
the Lamb upon the throne. Amen. However far we wander, however far we stray, God's steadfast love endures forever. Brothers and sisters, be assured, in Christ we are forgiven. Let us now greet one another with the love of Christ. Our prayer hymn for this morning is from Lynn, Words and Music. It is your insert in your bulletin. You've heard the tune many, many times as either prelude or postlude, so do enjoy. Let us sing.
Lovely, thank you. Among the list of our concerns are the family of Homer and Midge, as each of these families have suffered a loss recently. We have Donnie and Jim and Jane and Hutch and Debbie. Do we have other concerns or joys? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Compassionate God, we live in a world so full of need that it seems overwhelming. Encourage us with the knowledge that the work we do to aid another brings honor to you. We pray for the poor, the benevolent, and the heart of heart, for those who lack the basic necessities of life and for those who are willing to share the resources you have given. We praise you and we ask your aid. Correct those who hoard resources out of anxiety, ignorance, or selfishness. Open their eyes to your presence among the poor of the world and free them for joyful giving. We pray for the stranger, for those who minister to them, and for those who would refuse them. God, you admonish us to offer hospitality to the stranger and to welcome the weary. We pray for travelers and those who immigrate to new lands for refugees of political and religious wars, and for those who have no place to call home. Bless those who offer refuge to the wayfaring stranger, convict the conscience, and open the heart of any who would raise walls of exclusion and isolation. We pray for the sick and those in distress, for those who care for them, and for those who are afraid to offer fellowship to people in need. God, you hear the cry of all who are in distress. Be with those who grieve the loss of loved ones, especially Barb and her family and the loss of her sister. And be with the family of Homer, especially his wife. Comfort them at this time of loss in knowing that their loved ones are with you. Even though that really doesn't always help, Lord, we know that you're there and that you care. Heal those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially Donnie, Jim, Jane, and Hutch. Comfort them in their needs and help those who care for them. We also pray for those who abandon the sick and suffering out of fear. Teach us to serve our sisters and brothers and to share the burdens of their ailments. We pray for prisoners, for those who minister to them, and for those who guard them. For each in their respective needs, we ask for your mercy, guidance, and protection. By your mercy and by Christ's example, teach us the meaning of true righteousness. Help us to know what it means to serve your people. We join our hearts together now in praying the prayer that Jesus, Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel text today comes from Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes into his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. And I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. 
I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? The king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not care for you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Today marks a day of transition. It's a day for going full circle, if you will. Like the David Phelps song says, we are looking at the end of the beginning. The chorus from the song goes like this. He was born of a virgin one holy night in a little town of Bethlehem. Angels, angels gathered around him to sing praises to the great I am. He walked on water, healed the lame, and made the blind see. And for the first time here on earth, we learned that God could be a friend. Although he never did a single thing wrong, the angry crowd chose him, and then he walked down the road and died on the cross, and that was the end of the beginning. And somewhere in the middle of all of that, Jesus taught us how to live and how to love. Soon we will celebrate the birth of Christ, but before we do, we have one more essential lesson to learn. As one commentator wrote, we cannot overstate the significance of this gospel. It is Christ's final lesson before giving himself up to the cross. It's simple, it's straightforward, it's imperative. Feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, clothe the ragged and the naked, Welcome the stranger, care for the sick, visit the imprisoned, and if you do, you will serve me. Over the past few weeks, we have been journeying with Jesus toward his last days on earth, seeking guidance from his final lessons and his words of instruction. We have been cautioned to remain committed to our faith and to persevere even as we wait. We have been instructed to use our gifts wisely for God's glory and not to hide them away out of fear or a false sense of unworthiness. And now we have been reminded to care for one another and especially for the least and the lost and the lonely. In fact, Jesus cautions us that when they are neglected, he is neglected. Did you happen to notice one of the questions for reflection in the bulletin last week? The question was, how would it change you to see the face of Christ in every stranger you meet? Would it move you and inspire your generos generosity and compassion? Did you think about your answer? I would imagine that not one of us here, if we truly saw Jesus in the face of need, would hesitate to lend aid where we could. 
For those of us who love Christ, our problem is perhaps not so much a lack of willingness, but a lack maybe of Jesus' vision. And what about that whole troubling bit about the sheep and the goats? Aren't we supposed to be saved by grace? Did the Apostle Paul lie to us when he said, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and not by works so that no one can boast? Or are we expected to earn our salvation after all? Of course we are not. God is ready to forgive every sin, every disobedience, every neglectful or selfish act, because Jesus paid the price for our sin. But shouldn't knowing that we are saved by grace also move us to respond? How can we look at ourselves honestly and justly in juxtaposition with God's mercy and not be stirred? In explaining matters of faith and works, the letter of James explains it this way. Dear friends, Do you think you'll get anywhere in this if you learn all the right words but never do anything? Does merely talking about faith indicate that a person really has it? For instance, you come upon an old friend dressed in rags and half starved and say, Good morning, friend. Be clothed in Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and walk off without providing so much as a coat or a cup of soup. Where does that get you? Isn't it obvious that God talk and without God acts are outrageous nonsense? Oh, I can already hear one of you agreeing by saying, that sounds good. You take care of the faith department and I'll handle the works department. Hmm, not so fast. You can no more show me your works apart from your faith than I can show you my faith apart from my works. Faith and works, works and faith, they fit together like a hand in a glove. Sometimes you just got to love the message Bible translation for its plain speaking and for the word pictures that it paints. If we, as the song said, have learned for the first time that God could be a friend, and if we recognize that friend has a need, how can we not respond? Faith is more than words, not because it is required of us for our salvation, but because it needs to be expressed in concrete ways. True gratitude inspires genuine love, love that takes action. The problem with us humans is that we sometimes need a reminder of just what that response should look like. In Jesus' final lesson, he says, I know my sheep love me. I know they believe in me. I know that it is in them to respond to my call, but they are still sheep, and they need a shepherd to guide them. If you don't think so, look at the Pharisees. They thought their faith in God demanded extreme measures. They poured their faith into rule keeping and they bound themselves and the people in unachievable expectations of perfection. Jesus understood that we have a tendency to get off track. And so Jesus makes a point in this final crucial lesson of instructing us in how we should direct our faith in the ways that best honor and please God. Jesus is from everlasting to everlasting. He is from coming to earth to coming again in glory, from the birth of hope to hope eternal, from becoming the king of our hearts to the king of eternity. Jesus fills the space between reverence for God and love for man, and he asks us to join him there. This is from our Sunday school lesson this morning. Holding God continually before his eyes, Jesus saw everything in relation to the eternal. His respect for men was due not to what men were in themselves, but to what they were in the eyes of God. They were God's children, 
And therefore, no matter how poor or degraded, they were worthy of respect and honor. Any cruelty in word or in, humili in humanity, in action toward a human being caused the heart of Jesus to flash fire. Because such treatment of God's children was in his mind an insult to God himself. In his reverence for his father, Jesus made the whole world holy. And because of his adoration for the creator, he could not turn his back upon any created being. All Jesus asks is that we do the same. We are not bystanders in Christ's life. We are active participants in carrying out his mission of mercy to the lost and the least and the lonely. Today is the end of the beginning. Soon the season of, of giving will be upon us. What a fitting time to be given our marching orders. As I think of the phrase marching orders, I am reminded of a scene near the end of the movie Hook, in which Peter Pan, now all grown up and preparing to return to his grown up life, puts one of the lost boys in charge. As he looks over each of the boys one by one, he asks them, which one of you should I put in charge? Finally settling on the largest boy, he tells him to look after everyone who is smaller than you. The smallest boy, understanding that this charge was for each one of those boys in turn, asks, who should I look after? And he replies, never bugs, little ones. And then as Peter flies away home, he calls back to them saying, thank you for believing. Jesus left his disciples with their marching orders feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, clothe the naked, welcome the stranger, care for the sick, visit the lonely and the imprisoned. We understand that this charge is for each one of us in turn. Look, we can't do it all, but each one of us can help someone, somewhere, in some small way. And one day, if you do, you will hear Jesus say, thank you for believing. Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have shown us the sovereignty of divine love in compassion for the least, the lost, and the lonely. Give us eyes to see Jesus in the strangers that we meet. May we be your hands and feet in serving your people. Amen. In gratitude for the immeasurable gift of Jesus Christ, let us bring our tithes and offerings to God. God, use us and these gifts to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and honor your presence in all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our communion hymn is number 498, Loaves Were Broken, Words Were Spoken. I guess stand up again.
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites anyone who trusts him to share the feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. In your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You formed us in your image setting us in this world to love and serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. When we rebelled against you, refusing to trust and obey you, you did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back to your way. Then in the fullness of time, out of your great love for the world, you sent your only son to be one of us to redeem us and heal our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. On the night before he died, Jesus took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and giving it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of body and blood of Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The table is set. The ushers will come forward.
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. We thank you, O God, that through word and sacrament, you have given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and food of eternal life. Strengthen us in your service that our daily living may show our thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is hymn number 6. 43. Let us stand and sing. As you leave this place to love and serve the Lord, may the grace of Christ surround you, the love of God astound you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and forevermore.